for those who are awake or who are in the process of waking up. When speaking about many things going on in this world, there is two words that consistently get thrown at you or becomes the label you are most identified with. Two words that wouldn't be so bad if the mind control surrounding them wasn't so heavy or strong. But when receiving the label of conspiracy theorist or that you're speaking conspiracy theories, instead of you being labeled as one with discernment or maybe a thinker or that you lack trust for those at the top of the system, instead of being thought of in this way, people actually view you as crazy or mentally unsound. Some now are trying to go as far as saying you have a mental illness. And for those that are receiving this label, it can be quite frustrating because for the majority of us, we know that we aren't crazy. But in fact, we are the ones of a sound mind seeing the world plainly for what it is. It is actually reversed because it is in fact the ones that are labeling us as conspiracy theorists that are in fact the mentally ill ones living in a very strong delusion being steered and herded like cattle. Anyways, the label of conspiracy theorists and conspiracy theories is something that we all must deal with as we are waking up from this world system that was created. In this world system today, there is unfortunately no way of getting around this negative view that has been created around this term. Because those at the top of this world system have a vested interest in keeping the negativity surrounding it. I mean, what were they going to do? Admit that the information that they are being accused of is valid? Were they going to co-sign it? Obviously not. All they can do is deny the accusations and call us crazy. It is a very textbook strategy of defense. Now, this label of conspiracy theories can be quite annoying in the secular world. But in my opinion, it is most irritating when it comes from the section of this world that calls themselves believers. Those that identify as Christians and say they believe in the Bible and in the Messiah. Last week, I was asked a sincere question that I was led to expand on because I'm quite sure that this is what many of us are dealing with around our family and friends or in our churches and groups that we associate in. Someone asked, how do you respond to Christian leaders who think this is just a conspiracy? Like those of the past that had conspiracies that didn't come true. And I believe this sincere question is one that many of us struggle with, which allows these leaders to gain more strength. The answer to this question is quite simple, actually. And instead of allowing these leaders to gain more power in their ignorance, if we have the right view and attitude towards dealing with this, their power and influence will be reduced. And in order for more people to be saved and come out of the strong delusion, this is precisely what must happen. So we're going to discuss dealing with believers that do not believe in conspiracy theories. Let's begin. So let me go over this briefly, and I will probably go over it again later in the video. Let me make this clear. I am not saying that all conspiracy theories are true and that all things that are spread are valid. Just because you are identified as a conspiracy theorist or what you're talking about is identified as a conspiracy theory does not mean that you should gain automatic credibility. Unfortunately, this conspiracy theory section is a crowded space and that is a very big factor that works against us. So make sure you hold on to that thought. Every conspiracy is not true. So what is a conspiracy theory? If you go to Wikipedia, they explain it like this. A conspiracy theory is an explanation for an event or situation that invokes a conspiracy by sinister and powerful groups, often political in motivation, when other explanations are more probable. The term has a negative connotation, implying that the appeal to a conspiracy is based on prejudice or insufficient evidence. A conspiracy theory is not simply a conspiracy. Instead, it refers to a hypothesized conspiracy with specific characteristics, such as an opposition to the mainstream consensus among those people, such as scientists or historians, who are qualified to evaluate its accuracy. Now, I don't know about you, but from this, I feel that you can see my control built into this definition. It is highly opinionated, very much subjective, when it should just be presenting a definition without opinion, and it should be objective, just presenting facts. 
Now, if later on in the explanation, it gave a history of what surrounds the topic, then possibly it wouldn't be considered opinionated or subjective, which is simply presenting information based on or influenced by personal feelings, taste, or opinions. But they immediately went to basically say that conspiracy theories are false. Like, they didn't have to add this in. When other explanations are more probable, that the appeal to a conspiracy is based on prejudice and insufficient evidence. So basically, if anyone who goes to research what a conspiracy theory is and trusts in Wikipedia, which you shouldn't, they will already have a feeling of distrust and unbelief. Now, if you go to an actual dictionary like Merriam-Webster, it simply defines a conspiracy theory as a theory that explains an event or set of circumstances as the result of a secret plot by usually powerful conspirators. And that's really all it is. It's that simple. Events or a set of circumstances that has happened because of a secret plot by powerful conspirators. And for people to think that this is something that could be so far-fetched really shows the level of mind control that has been placed on them. The truth is that the term conspiracy theory has only had a negative connotation and view surrounding it for only a few decades. The change of the belief surrounding the term comes from a mind controlling campaign that some claim originated from the CIA. This label of conspiracy theory with a negative view surrounding it originated in 1967 to disqualify those who questioned the official version of John F. Kennedy's assassination. And they doubted that his killer, Lee Harvey Oswald, had acted alone. It's said that the CIA intentionally created its negative connotations and so turned the label into a tool of political propaganda. It was only in the 1980s that the term conspiracy theory began to really have the negative connotations we associate it with today. And since this time, the media and political leaders, business leaders, even our entertainment has made it a view that those who hold conspiracy theories are false and many times crazy that there is some sort of mental illness that they have and they do not live in reality. I remember the movie Conspiracy Theory with Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts. They made Mel Gibson out to be an unstable crazy man, even though in the end, he was right. The point that I'm getting at is that the negative view that people have of conspiracy theories are here today because of the mind control that has been done to the masses to make people believe that when people think like this, they are crazy and they should not be listened to or entertained. And so when a view is told that tries to explain that powerful people are in control and have manipulated and set certain events in action, the mind-controlled puppets of this world instantly turn off their brains and go into a mental shutdown because they have been trained to do so very subtly, but intentionally. Just think about it. Why is it that people are so quick to disbelieve that there are powerful people in this world that hold enough power to manipulate events? Why is this so hard to believe? I mean, we believe it when the news media wants to create their stories and tells us who to blame things for. But when it comes to views that are outside of the mainstream consensus, it is something that 98% of people want to ignore and or reject. Why is that? I mean, our movies show this constantly. Think of all the Bond movies with all the powerful villains with secret plots. Think of the Jason Bourne movies with the government agencies working around the world with secret plots. Even our cartoons show us this. I mean, what did Pinky and the Brain do every day? Gee, Brain, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. I mean, just look at the politics of our world. To this day, there is a constant blaming of the rich for everything. But if you go deeper than where the media has let you go, then you are a conspiracy theorist. Basically, in order not to be a conspiracy theorist, you have to not go further than what the media reports and what the mainstream has deemed to be true, no matter how many facts you can show. That's frustrating. Now, I could go on all day speaking about the hypocrisy and pure ignorance surrounding this subject. But at the end of the day, it really is clear why they have done this mental conditioning surrounding this topic. It also makes a lot of sense why those that are not believers and those that follow the ways and mindsets of this world would not believe in conspiracy theories. Where it really becomes irritating is when it is done within the body of Messiah. Those that claim to believe in the word of Elohim and say that they believe fully in Yeshua, 
It's when they say they don't believe in conspiracies that really frustrates me. Particularly those that are leaders who put themselves out for others to follow. Have you seen people in your congregation online spreading conspiracy theories, sometimes unwittingly? Most of the time, unwittingly. People will see something that they see on the internet that comes from an individual that they've trusted in their past, and then they'll share it because it resonates with you know, their way of kind of seeing the world. Any leader of the faith in Yeshua that tells their followers to not believe in conspiracies is false and should not be followed. They should not be your leader. They are either leading you astray intentionally or they're doing it because of their lack of understanding and ignorance. Regardless of whether they are intentional or not, they are doing you harm, not good. I unfortunately see so many church leaders and pastors that don't want their congregations to understand the agendas that were built to destroy them. There's not enough standing up to our true enemies. There are too many leaders in the faith today that lead their flocks right into the enemy's hands, all because they are not warning them of the dangers and in fact doing the opposite and telling them there is nothing to see or think about. If the majority of the church leaders are engaging and promoting this type of thought, what exactly do you think happens with those that are following them? Those following them are built to be weak and not equipped to fight against their enemy. They also become unknowingly trusting of their enemy and side with him more and more because they don't even know he exists. They become deceived and follow the world more and more because they have been trained to do so. And they also reject those who are trying to wake them up and pull them out of the strong delusion. All of this happening is exactly what our enemy wants, and he is very happy to see this. And to make matters worse, what he does to also add to this is creating false conspiracies and making them a focus of public debate. He loves creating a false belief that is tied in with some truth. We can see a major example of this with the QAnon conspiracy. This conspiracy was pure manipulation by our enemy that added some truths while adding massive false ideals. And then he spread it amongst the church, making all who follow them look foolish and not credible. There were truths to that conspiracy, but because there were so many lies and it was centered around Trump as a type of messiah around it, it made everyone that believed it look crazy and not credible. And once you lose your credibility, it is extremely hard to gain it back. QAnon infiltrated the churches and made those in the church look crazy. And the worst part is what they do after. They then attach it to all the other conspiracy theories. This way, they can cancel out the truth while they cancel out the lies that they have created. So by infiltrating us through QAnon, I hope I'm saying it right, I don't know. Oh, when infiltrating us through them, when we start speaking about other major things, it just looks like it is a part of the other crazy stuff that was already deemed not credible. Therefore, people are not listening to the other things that are actually credible. It's a great strategy. So this leads me to the full point of why I'm making this video. The question that was asked of me was, how do you respond to Christian leaders who think this is just a conspiracy? Like those of the past that had conspiracies that didn't come true. And this is what we will all need to get a grip on because as we are trying to drag people out of this strong delusion, you must know how to handle this. Because if the people refuse to accept that their enemy is actively working against them, why would they listen to you? Before they understand the conspiracies, they first must understand their faith. You see, the reason that they don't believe you is because they don't fully understand their faith. They understand religion. And unfortunately, that religion they understand will lead them to the one world religion that leads to the worship of the beast. The churches they have gone to or are a part of have not done a good job in making them understand their faith. They tell a very one-sided story that does not leave them well equipped to handle the world as a believer. If your leaders do not understand this or teach this, it is no wonder why so many of us are not equipped to handle Satan. So there's a few lessons that need to be understood. Lesson one, know your enemy. As a believer, you must understand that your enemy is Satan, who is the God of this world, meaning the one who the majority of this world are bending the knee to. He is against us and seeking to hide us from the gospel and salvation through Yeshua. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this world has blinded, 
who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Messiah, who is the image of Messiah, should shine on them. We are instructed in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see, your pastors, church leaders, leaders in the faith in general, as well as their church period, should never lose sight of this. Satan is the god of this world that many people in this world bow down to. And if you're not sober-minded and diligent in your fight against him, he will devour you. So that's the first lesson you must understand. And if you understand that, you next must understand who is aligned with him and how he is working against you. Lesson number two, you must understand his power and that people do serve him. One of the things I couldn't understand when I was first waking up is that people actually worship the devil. To me, it didn't really make a lot of sense. And so I couldn't really understand that people actually did this. But it's true. People worship the devil. We just went over that Satan is the god of this world. This is shown throughout the scriptures. So if you do not understand this point, all you need to do is read your Bible from the beginning. We see this from Genesis when he tempted Adam and Eve all the way until he worked through Judas to betray Yeshua. But in the scriptures, we have also been told of his power and sway that he has over this world. Do you remember in Matthew chapter 4, when Yeshua fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and then was tempted by Satan in the wilderness? One of the temptations was for power. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Yeshua said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahuwah, your Elohim, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. That's Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. You see, the devil tempted him with all the kingdoms of the world and their glory if Yeshua fell down and worshiped him. He has control of the kingdoms of the earth and they all follow him, which is confirmed if you just understand history and the history of paganism and then the rise of the Roman Catholic Church in Islam. If you just understood history, you would recognize that those at the top of the many kingdoms of this world worship Satan and they receive their power from him. Now Yeshua rejected him and rebuked him, which sent him away. But do you think that all men are this strong and there were not men and families that gave into this temptation? Obviously not. And if you believe otherwise, you are being extremely naive, especially if you call yourself a believer. You must understand that there are families that have fell down and worshiped Satan and they are indebted to him for the power and control that they yield. So they do his bidding for him. This is a major point that is never connected amongst believers. They only think of what Yeshua does for them personally, but never considers the ones that have knowingly rejected Yeshua and happily work on the opposite side to bring about the goal of Satan. That's how they received their power. There were many that were given the same power that the devil tried to tempt Yeshua with. I explain this further in the Matrix series part two. There are powerful families and groups who have pledged their allegiance to Satan to do his will. Every believer should understand this. And if they do not understand this, it's more than likely because they are being manipulated and controlled by the side they don't want to admit exist. Okay, so let's go back to the definition of a conspiracy theory. It is a theory that explains an event or set of circumstances as the result of a secret plot by usually powerful conspirators. And in this explanation, we just covered a big part of their who in this definition. There are believers in our faith that believe that conspiracy theories are ridiculous. But if they understood their faith and who was against them and how he is using others to be against them, the thought of conspiracy theories all being crazy would actually be the actual crazy thought. The powerful conspirators are the same ones who pledge allegiance to Satan. Lesson number three, you must know of Bible prophecy. This is one of those things that definitely separates the churches today. The majority of the modern day churches love to talk about feel good messages, telling their congregations how they're going to get that promotion 
or come out on top of their haters, how much they love Jesus, and doing a whole bunch of other things. They give a whole bunch of messages that tell people what they want to hear. And that is primarily what we see coming from many pulpits today. But what the majority do not talk about is Bible prophecy. This is a subject that is particularly ignored in the modern day church. Why do you think that is? Well, there are many different reasons and it's specific to each church. But the easiest diagnosis to make is that the churches are not being led by the Holy Spirit, but by the world. And who is the God of this world? Yeah, we just went over it. Understand, Satan hates the book of Revelation, which is why you do not hear it preached in many churches. Why does Satan hate that book? Because it tells what his fate is and what the fate is of those who follow him and are blinded by him. Too many people are steered because of Satan's disgust of Bible prophecy, so they don't understand much of it. If you understood Bible prophecies, there is no way that you can write off conspiracy theories. In order for any of those goals of Satan to come about, he is going to have to conspire against his enemies, which is the church. He is going to have to conspire against the world in order for them to accept all his doctrine. In order for Bible prophecy to come true, there must be conspiracies happening behind the scenes. I have made a video recently that discusses Bible prophecy. So if it is you that does not understand Bible prophecy, that video is a good start for you to start your studies of what is prophesied to come. I mean, do we think that the enemy is just sitting quietly somewhere being nice? I mean, we already know that's not true. According to the scripture we just read in 1 Peter chapter 3. Any Christian leader that writes off things as pointless conspiracies should not be a Christian leader. If they are true leaders in the faith, they should be expecting the words of Messiah to be fulfilled. And therefore, they should understand the other side would have to have conspiracies in order for the prophecies to be fulfilled. Every believer in Messiah should be expecting conspiracies. So to automatically write things off as just a pointless, unfounded conspiracy is wrong and irresponsible. And either your church leader is working for the enemy or they are deceived by him. But either way, you should not be following them or being led by them. And this is an action that you need to rectify now. Do not be led by those who ignore Satan, because more than likely they will lead you straight to him. The scripture never said to ignore Satan and he will flee from you. It says to be sober, to be vigilant, and to resist him. Everyone who takes the approach of ignorance is leading you falsely to slaughter by your enemy. And I can say that with absolute assurance, because what did the scriptures say would happen if you're not sober, diligent, and resistant? Yes, it said our adversary the devil will devour us. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 tells us, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him. Satan deceives the whole world. Our only answer and defense against him is Yeshua, to follow his commands, to be led by his Holy Spirit, and to live through the word of Elohim. Any believer that has been running off important subjects because they believe it is pointless conspiracy needs to do some deep reflection of their thought life and where these thoughts are coming from. Now the common concern is probably what the next part of the question was, and that is rejection because of other conspiracy theories that were never proved to be true. Or like what many others try to say, that many others believe that we were in the end times and that Bible prophecy was about to happen. But because it never did, this is a good reason to reject those who speak of it now. You hear too much talk like this today. The first thought that needs to be held on to is that those people that say that they are believers, but then talk like this, should never be your leader or even given an opportunity for their views to take any root of validity in your mind. They talk as the world does. So just because they call themselves a believer does not actually make it so. We cannot go through every false prophet and every false claim and make sense of them all. I mean, if we had all the time, we could easily pinpoint the areas in which many of the claims that were made were false. But in the end, we were told that in the last days, false prophets will be in the abundance. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up from themselves teachers. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of Elohim, 
because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. I mean, I can keep going on and on with this. So for a believer, especially a leader, to use this as their reasoning only shows their lack of faith and adherence to the word. All the false examples they want to use are actually confirmation of the scriptures and the prophecies. That's not a reason to not listen to everything you're hearing. You should stop being led by people that don't exhibit biblical faith. Stop following people that love the world so much that they don't want to let go of the world that they have created for themselves. They are holding on to it for selfish reasons, while in the process keeping you from our Messiah and being ready for him. And this cannot be tolerated. Now listen, like I said earlier, do not believe all conspiracy theories. There is a great deal of them that are just about distractions and smoke and mirrors. Things that keep you occupied and distracted. Just like when I was mentioning QAnon. When I heard of them, I instantly ignored it and never made it a part of my worldview. When you see the world paying so much attention to this kind of things in the media, more than likely it is false and a distraction. That doesn't mean that there isn't truth involved. It just means that there isn't any power backed by the Holy Spirit in your defense of it. It means it is a distraction and will not help you be guarded from your enemy. There are differences in conspiracies. In understanding the validity of the conspiracy, you should always consider its correlation to Bible prophecy and the word, period. This is what you must do in the beginning to understand your enemy better. There are a lot of deceptions that you're going to have to go through in uncovering the truth of this world. In order to do this and not be distracted or carried off, you need like a fact checker or a source that can keep you on track. There is no better source than the Bible. Let it be your reference book when you want to understand what is happening in the world in darkness. Now please understand that these people are moving in darkness. There is no way for us to know for certain all the inner workings and what they are doing in the dark and secret. Our job is not to know everything, but we can understand why things are happening and what the purpose of the conspiracy is. As you learn your enemy better, you begin to get better equipped in recognizing when things are happening intentionally by them or they are just mistakes. Your job is not to live in conspiracy theories, so get that straight. Your job is not to focus on all the evil that they are doing and conspiring. Your job is to simply not be led by the conspirators and not let your heart be moved or steered by their actions. And this is why we pay attention and do not ignore conspiracies. If you are someone who has been rejecting conspiracies, it's time that you move away from that point of view. I'm not telling you to turn into a nutcase and speak ridiculous thoughts. But if you believe that it is ridiculous to believe that there are powerful families who worship Satan and want him to be worshipped by all, and are working to achieve that goal within all facets of our society, and they also want the rest of the world forgetting and neglecting our true savior, Yeshua the Messiah? If you actually think that this is a far-fetched conspiracy theory, you need to go seek our father in prayer and consult with him more and read his word. That understanding should be a baseline foundation. It's not a special thought. Now, if you are one that has been debating with people that think like this, then you must stop doing so and give it to father because their lack of belief in conspiracies is deeper than what they are letting on. You are in fact dealing with a person who has a lack of belief in the word and an attachment to this world that is steering them to the enemy. Stop talking about conspiracies and go back to the basics. Watch this video with them and maybe go through their understanding of the enemy. This is really the biggest diagnosis of the problem in our faith. People don't recognize the enemy enough and do not understand his tactics and his ways. It's the complete opposite of the Apostle Paul and what he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. He said, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. When we are ignorant of Satan and his devices, he will take advantage of us, and this cannot be. So we must gain knowledge and understanding, because like Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We must understand our enemy, his goals, and who he works through in this grand system of this world. If you call yourself a believer and are not expecting conspiracies, you are not in tune enough with biblical realities 
and you need a reality check that comes through the Holy Spirit. The point I am making is that this talk of rejecting conspiracies is ridiculous and has no place in a believer's stance. We of course shouldn't be believing everything we hear, and all conspiracies do not lead us into truth or anywhere we need to be. We don't live in conspiracy, but we should not be led astray by them when they are carried out. We must know how to divide truth and lies. This isn't about being a conspiracy theorist. That's just the label this world wants to place on you. It's more about being a believer who is staying ready for our Messiah. So you are in a classic battle in rejecting the ways and mindsets of this world. You cannot do this effectively if you have an unhealthy love of this world. If you are a believer, this world is against you. It does not want you with Messiah, but actually living against him. And it will do whatever it can to get you off track. You must decide today to live in truth and be led by our Father and not by this world. Just because the world calls you crazy doesn't mean you are. And today, if the world is actually calling you crazy, I'd wear that label like a badge of honor because it seems that they are actually the ones that are crazy, completely mad. Anyways, what I'm saying to you is live your life in truth and then learn the lies and reject them. Be a believer and carry out the purpose that you were created for. Be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Do not let it be you. Be blessed.